Hello and welcome to the FM Scout YouTube channel. I'm Curti FM and in this video we're going to be looking at Arsene Wenger's Invincibles team and the system he employed during that Invincible season of 2003-2004. However, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the video I'd like to invite you over to my channel Curti FM. I have just finished an Arsenal save actually uh, and I've now taken over as my beloved Aldershot Town. Um, we're only about five or six episodes into that so now would be a good time to get involved catch up with the series and uh, if you like what you see why not hit a cheeky sub that'd be great so before we go into the game screen and I'll show you the tactic let's just remind ourselves of the kind of general shape of the Invincibles team now I did a lot of reading up on this tactic before doing this video and one of the websites I visited was the fantastic zonalmarking.net where he has actually got an article of, of hit on his interpretation of the Invincibles system between 2001 and leading up to the Invincible system in 2004. And as you can see from the screen, it's kind of set up like a 4-4-2, with the fullbacks getting forward, making sure they stay wide. The wide players, Jungberg and Pires, coming in, well, more so Jungberg, coming inside, supporting the strikers. Pires just linking up with Henri on that left-hand side. Burkamp dropping deep from the front line, acting as a pivot. So that's the kind of shape we're looking to create. We just need to discuss a few of the sort of key elements that we need to build into this tactic. Starting from the back, firstly, the Invincible team defended actually quite deep. Um, not to the extent of Leicester last year, but they did tend to drop deep because what they wanted to do was catch teams out on the counter-attack. Um, when you've got so much pace up front, with Henri, Perez on the left, Jumberg on the right, obviously the full-backs getting forward as well, you need to be able to get the most out of that. So they defended deep with the intention of hitting fast counter-attacks and utilising that pace as much as possible. Obviously they also had the ability to control the play, and the full-backs used to get forward as much to support play and give as much width in the final third as possible just to try and stretch teams. So we want to make sure we get our wide roles set up correctly. We want our fullbacks to attack, more, probably more so on the left hand side with the Ashley Cole role, but also the roles in front of them uh, with the sort of Pires role, Jungberg role. We need to make sure we get those positions correct. So now we've got all that stuff covered, let's meet the tactic. Okay, so here it is on screen. As you can see, we've kind of replicated that 4-4-2. Uh, that's the kind of defensive shape that we're after. Obviously, once we have the ball and are attacking, obviously it's going to look significantly different. However, the 4-4-2 is the kind of basic shape that I wanted to start with. Let's look at the team instructions. So we're actually starting with a counter mentality that just falls into keeping the defensive line deep and hitting teams with explosive counter-attacking football. Just feel like that makes more sense than employing a slightly more aggressive mentality because given the quality of our players and our standing within the division a lot of teams are going to come to us and try and defend. A counter mentality could help us open up opposition defences when they try and park the bus. The team shape is fluid. This is purely because I mean individuals uh, in this system are so important however we do want the team to act as a unit plus we want our players to have a little bit of increased uh, creative freedom so a fluid system is best suited. Uh, tempo, we're playing at a higher tempo, obviously on counter-attacking you're naturally playing a slightly lower tempo than you would do on, a, on an aggressive uh, mentality, so higher tempo here is employed. We also want to play wide, we want to get our fullbacks involved in the game and make use of those dangerous wide players. Playing wide, uh, again, in relative terms, counter-attacking football, you're gonna, you're, you tend to play slightly more narrow, so bit of width in the team is going to help us try and replicate the system. Closing down, we've just left that on sometimes. The Invincibles team didn't really, I mean they closed down a bit but not too much, you know, not to the extent of your sort of Gagan pressing systems or anything like that. So we've just left that on sometimes. We've left the defensive line on normal. Player of defence is also highlighted. Um, actually a lot of the Arsenal defenders, Campbell, Toure, Ashley Cole, uh, Lauren, they all started as non-defenders, if you like, um, so they were all comfortable on the ball, they all knew how to pick a pass, uh, so playing out of defence is highlighted because we want to replicate that. 
Pass into space, obviously that just fits in with the counter-attacking mentality. Uh, we're whipping crosses in rather than floating them in or just having them on mixed really because it's just no point. There's no point. We've got we haven't got any tall players up front that can be knocking balls down to oncoming midfielders, so whip crosses just make sense. And it also ties in with the higher tempo game. And roam from positions. We we just want our players to try and cause a bit of havoc really for opposition defenders and hopefully they're intelligent enough to do that in an effective way. So let's just run through uh, each position uh, for player instructions, etc. So Petr Cech, he's just a bog standard goalkeeper. Um, we've just asked him to distribute the ball quickly. That's all, whether he goes short, whether he goes long, don't really mind, but we want him, once he gets the ball, to move it, get rid of it as soon as he can so that we can launch our attacks. Hector Bellerin at right back, we've just asked him to stay wider, that's all. Uh, Sanchez is going to be cutting in in front of him, so hopefully there's space to occupy for Bellerin. So he should do that naturally, but we've just we've added the instructions to, just to ensure that, that that is what he does. The two central defenders, Mustafi and Koscielny, bog standard central defenders, all we've asked is that they close down a bit less. We don't want them getting dragged out of position, especially when we're defending deep. So uh, we just want them to close down less. We want them to remain as sort of defensive lin linchpins in the side stay in position and just be central defenders. On the left hand side Kieran Gibbs is a complete wing back attack and to be honest the player instructions for this role just just tick all the boxes that I wanted to tick anyway so he is just a bog standard complete wing back attack we haven't added any player instructions to him. Right midfield so this is the Jungberg role um, we want him to play narrow we want him to get further forward to support the attacks if you remember, Jungberg just often used to pop up in the right place at the right time, and he actually scored quite a lot of goals from midfield, supporting Henri and Burkamp. So we've asked him to sit narrower, we've asked him to cut inside with the ball, we've asked him to cross left often. Jungberg would probably dribble less as well. He, he wasn't a prolific dribbler of the ball. Um, he was just a kind of a finisher. I mean, you could argue that you could play him as a Ramdeuter, but just for defensive reasons, I've employed him from that wide midfield position. In central midfield we've got Coquelin just as a central midfield defend. With this role he's going to close down probably slightly more than I'd like. However, apart from that one thing, the role is pretty much perfect uh, for this position. This is the Gilberto role on this right hand side of central midfield. So we've just left it as bog standard. It would have been nice if I could, ask, could have asked him to close down slightly less, but I don't think it's going to cause us much harm, especially with the backup of Koscielny and Mustafi behind him just holding their positions. Okay, this role is the box-to-box -box midfielder role. This is the Vieira role. Um, Arsenal don't really have anyone particularly suited to certainly replicating what Vieira did in the, t in the team. In the simulation, I've gone between Xhaka and Ramsey. Ramsey's been slightly more effective, especially going forward. Um, but I think if I was going to employ this system... I'd probably be looking to recruit someone for this role. Players who spring to mind might be someone like Pogba, uh, maybe Dembele from Tottenham. Obviously, that's sacrilege given that this is an Arsenal tactic. But you just want someone who's a strong box-to-box -box type midfielder. I mean, obviously, there aren't that many of them these days, really. In Just in the Premier League, a strong box-to-box -box midfielder who's going to get up and down the pitch. He's got a little bit of creativity, and I'd, I'd probably be looking to... To recruit for this role. On the left hand side this is the Pires role. Um, we've got Cazorla out there who's doing a good job to be fair. Uh, obviously Cazorla's getting on though, he's 32 years old, you'd probably be looking to replace him with someone. For the first season or two Cazorla will definitely do you a job in this role out wide on the left. He's going to be cutting inside, yeah, he's, going to be, he's going to be linking up with Walcott and Gibbs on that left hand side trying to create a bit of, uh, trying to create a bit of havoc and he's done a really good job for us out there so far. Okay, we move into the uh, attacking side of the pitch. Um, obviously, Dennis Burkamp is probably more suited to a, a forward role, like a deep-lying forward or even a false nine or something like that. However, Arsenal, with their squad, don't really have that type of player. So uh, an advanced playmaker attack is probably the closest we're going to get uh, to replicating the Burkamp role. What I've asked him to do is hold up the ball, so to act as a pivot when we're counter-attacking, and also we want him to get further forward. So we do want Ozil to try and get his share of goals, 
to try and be Dennis Burkamp, really, which is a pretty big ask. Up front on the left-hand side, uh, we've gone for Theo Walcott. Um, it was a toss-up between him and Lucas, who could fulfil this role better. But we've gone for Theo Walcott. I, 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 he just He's probably more like Henri, and I know he's not anything like Henri, really, but he's probably more like he's probably the most like Henri player that Arsenal have in their current squad. Uh, he's a complete forward support. We've just asked him to uh, move into channels, which is actually one of his preferred player moves, actually. He does that really, really quite effectively. In terms of opposition instructions, I haven't set any. However, given that Henri used to come from that left-hand side quite a lot, and he also used to press opposition right-backs, I'd be tempted, probably most games, to set Theo Walcott to, to man-mark the right-back, just to ensure that he stays out on that left-hand side so that he's available to link up with Cazorla and Gibbs and also Ramsey here in this box-to-box -box role. Okay, so that's the tactic. That's the player instructions. I'm going to show you how it's done. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised because I didn't think that this current Arsenal squad fit this tactic that well. So let, let's let's show you how, we, how we've been getting on. So yeah, we're top of the league at Christmas. Um, I've stopped the simulation here purely because uh, Sanchez, like, it's just typical of this game. If you leave stuff to the assistant manager, nothing works. So all these players have come out in support of Alexis Sanchez because he's decided he wanted a new contract. Obviously, my assistant was dealing with it, so it's kind of got out of hand. The morale of the team's dropped. So I stopped the simulation here. But yeah, I'm, I was surprised that we've done as well as we have done. So if you look at the league table, um, we're first in the league, three points clear of Man City. Man United have got a game in hand, they're four points behind, so they could come back to within a point of us. Um, but we've lost three games. Our goal difference is nearly twice of our nearest rival, which is amazing. So the, f the fact that this tactic has been performing with players that don't, I don't think, actually fit the tactic that well, suggests to me that this, this could be if you get the right players in, this could be a really good system. Uh, if you look at the player stats, Theo Walcott is actually top scorer in the league, joint with uh, Ibrahimovic on 13 goals. He's obviously been playing as our main striker, and he's been absolutely superb for us. Uh, in terms of average ratings, we're dominating the top three. Santi Cazorla on that left-hand side, Theo Walcott and Alexis Sanchez, all making up the top three average ratings in the league. Uh, in terms of assists, Meza Ozil is uh, leading on eight. Player of the match, Theo Walcott is in tied first position. Uh, and clean sheets, Petr Cech has been performing really well. Uh, only Courtois has more clean sheets. So if we take a look at some of the results. In the Premier League, uh, we started with a, a defeat at home to Leicester, uh, which was, obviously wasn't a great start. But then things, things picked up. So beat Chelsea 3-1 away from home. Theo Walcott getting two goals. Uh, other big results, Everton... A uh, comfortable 3-0 win at home. We lost to Sunderland away from home, but, but that can be partly put down to the fact that Elneny was sent off in the 36th minute. Luck, probably lucky to get a one all draw with Bournemouth at home by the looks of things. Mark Pugh put them ahead. Cazorla equalised the penalty. But then the results picked up again. We beat Tottenham 3-1 away from home. Aaron Ramsey from that box-to-box -box midfield role getting a couple. Man City at home, 5-1. Theo Walcott getting himself a hat-trick. Uh, Two all draw with Man United. Now, it's worth pointing out that at this point of the season, Man United looked imperious. Uh, they were top of the league. I think they'd only lost one game, won all, the, won all the others, and their form has dipped slightly. And it all kind of started from this two all draw. So a solid performance against a team, a Man United team that was flying high at that point. We went to Southampton, picked up a 4-1 win. Uh, we've recently lost to Liverpool, which is a shame. But, you know, Anfield's a tough place to go. Uh, but we've picked things up again with 3-0 wins over Stoke and Middlesbrough. So in terms of league results, we've got some cracking results against some big teams and it's going really, really well. In the Champions League, we were putting a group with Besiktas, Olympiacos and Real Madrid. And as you can see, we drew one game with Besiktas at the start there. We uh, beat Olympiacos twice and we won one and lost one against Real Madrid. In the home game, we beat them 3 0. A really, really dominant performance. So, I just want to show you a few examples now of the tactic in action, of uh, some of the key components that we discussed, just visually show you how the tactic performs in game. 
So this first clip I want to show you is from the 3-0 win over Real Madrid in the Champions League. Uh, this is the first goal of the game, uh, Aaron Ramsey scores. Um, really good highlight of the counter-attacking style, uh, how the fluid system works, players moving back and forth together. Um, so I'm going to let it play on. Real Madrid have the ball with Bale, he's just cutting in from this right-hand side, uh, and I'll let it play on for a bit. So Bale has it, Monreal takes it off him, Walcott immediately turns to run at the defenders, he drifts over to that right hand side, plays the ball to Alexis, and look at the three players we have there at the back post, all waiting for that cross, that pass across the goal by Alexis Sanchez. This is uh, from the same game, it's our third goal of the game, uh, this is the goal that Sanchez scored. So we start with Ozil on the ball here, I just really like this goal, uh, mainly because of the link up play on the left hand side with Cazorla. Walcott and Aaron Ramsey as well um, and then also Sanchez who finishes it a la Freddy Jumberg. Um it's a really great example of the sort of goal that Jumberg used to score so I'll let it play on Ozil has it squares it to Ramsey knocks it into Walcott who looks left which is great to Cazorla Walcott makes the little run in behind keeper makes a good save there but Alexis or Freddy Jumberg taps in the rebound. It was a really, really good goal. Really good example. Okay, this last highlight I'm going to show you, again, is a good example of counter-attacking football, but it's also um, a good highlight of showing fluid football, players moving into space that other players are vacating. Um, so, And also, it just shows how narrow and compact we can be. Ericsson has it here, plays it into Janssen. Surrounded by Arsenal players, really good compact defending. And then if you just look... Giroud has it, he's held it up, and on this left-hand side, Monreal is bursting a gut to get forward to support him, which is exactly the kind of thing we want from our fullbacks. So Giroud is going to play it into Monreal, who's staying high up the pitch, gets the cross in, and our box-to-box -box midfielder at that point is the furthest forward uh, who gets the header and scores, but it's also worth pointing out that Alexis was also at the far post waiting to pounce. Uh, if the cross had gone to the far post. So in terms of attacking football, this system is just is really, really good. We're scoring a lot of goals, and with the right players in each role, I think you could really do well with this system. As with all the Tactic Tuesday videos, these are purely my interpretation of the tactic. So if there's anything you disagree with, any changes you think I could have made, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. Plus, as always, the download for the tactic will also be in the description. So that's all from me. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. It's really, really appreciated when you do. If you're new to the FM Scout YouTube channel, why not subscribe? And also head over to the FM Scout website. It's a cracking website. There's loads of stuff on there to enhance your football manager experience. You can download graphics, you can get tactical advice. There's a bunch of stuff over there that will help you along the way, especially if you're new to the game. Like I said, I'm Curti FM. Feel free to come over to my channel, drop me a sub, that would be amazing. Hopefully you like what you see and you stay around. But until next time, ta-ta for now.